Hello everyone. So now we are going to talk about the torque acting on a current loop which is placed inside a magnetic field. So it's basically an easy derivation. So it just need to be like step by step you have to do. That's it. Okay. So there is a loop which is given PQRS. Okay. You can see that very clearly. So we are going to find out what is the torque acting on it. And by the way, like you know that PQ, QR, RS and SP. All of them are basically like individual, suppose you consider individual conductors. So when they place inside a magnetic field, there is a chance that there will be a force acting on these conductors. First, let's deal with that. Okay. First, let's deal with how much is the force acting on each of these conductors. I'm going to take the number one. Number one, what is my number one? PQ. Let's say consider PQ, the conductor PQ. So here you can see that in PQ that length is actually in this direction and current is basically let's say in this direction okay so current is in this direction and magnetic field in that direction everything is given so you take fleming's left hand rule what is fleming's left hand rule f b i i always tell you that f b i force magnetic field i for current right so this is the the federal bureau of investigation like that you can remember okay so now you look at this you apply the magnetic field here, current is in this direction. So thumb will be upwards. The force is actually upwards. So which means the force is upwards, which is given in that. Here the direction is given. Okay. Number two, let's say here I'm going to consider how much is the force F is equal to I L B. So let's say the length is L. I'm considering the length as L. Okay, I'll be giving here. And the breadth is B, which is given already there. Breadth is B. Okay. So now you can see that F is equal to ILB. And what, what is the direction? It is upwards. Upwards means I'm going to put this dot. Because it's upwards, you know, that direction. Z direction. Now, my question is, what about the force acting on second one? What about the force acting on PQ? After PQ, who is there? QR is there. QR. QR. Conductor QR. So F is equal to no doubt it is zero. Why? Why zero? Since theta is equal to zero. So here you can see that what is the force between, uh, sorry, angle between IL, the current element or length and magnetic field, which is both are actually in the same direction. Those who have doubt, you can see, you can see that both are in the same direction. So which means theta is equal to zero, sine theta, sine zero is equal to zero. So that, that part also been sorted. So now third one, what about the third one? Third one, you can say RS, the conductor RS. How much will be F? F is equal to I is there, L is there. So magnetic field is perpendicular. So no doubt F is equal to I into L into B. But what is the direction? That's what I want. So you can, again, you can take Fleming's left hand rule, magnetic field that direction. Current is this, current is actually in that direction. So thumb will be pointing downward. So which means here it is downward, this one. So I can put this is downward or into the like minus is that direction. Okay, if, if I keep it like this, then it will be into the paper. That's why I just put that symbol over there. All right. So now, now let me ask you a question. Like what about the last and final one, fourth one? Fourth one, what is the conductor name? SP. Okay, in, in the case of SP, how much is F? F is equal to zero, no doubt. Again, theta is equal to zero degree and sine theta, sine zero is equal to zero. So you can see that very clearly. So here length is actually in this direction. I'll be giving, yeah. Length is in this direction and magnetic field is also in this direction. So basically it is not zero. It is IL is in this direction and the magnetic field in this direction is 180 degree you can consider. Even if it is theta zero or 180 degree doesn't matter because here both the values are, both the values are zero. So you can either consider because you no, know, it depends on which direction you are taking the current. If you are taking the current in the anti-clockwise, I mean this direction, clockwise direction, then whatever we have, taken that that will be interchanged uh, sine 0 becomes sine 180 so that is the basic idea okay so here that is what is the idea now so you got a four, four cases you got and out of these two are zero and other two are 
like forces are acting but in the opposite direction now i'm going to ask you a question look at this you can see this book so in this in this book what is the force acting on here magnetic field is acting in this direction what is the what is the force i mean acting on this side zero what is the force acting on this side zero but here the force is acting inwards but here the force is acting up i mean outwards towards that direction here inwards here that direction so my question what will happen to the book the book will rotate right so here this direction here that direction so what will happen book will have a tendency to rotate right this is what is called torque this is what is called torque and then you i hope you understood that clear idea what is torque and what is the equation for torque so i always consider torque is equal to force into perpendicular distance force into perpendicular distance so torque is is equal to force into perpendicular distance so now my question both the torques are in the same direction or not yes yes forces are not in the same direction but torques are in for example here torque will be in inverse so it makes a torque in this direction so let's say this consider i'm considering this as clockwise so what about here here the force is in outwards so it will be in this direction so that torque also in this direction so basically this torque plus this torque it will be like this right so both the torques are in the same direction so i can add both the torques so this is how you make it like simple you simplify the torque don't make it too complicated like uh, vectors and this and that you add and finally you will end up if you know that then no problem i don't mind i don't mind but if you don't know those things very clearly don't make it complicated make it very simple so torque is equal to how much already i told you a force into perpendicular distance now my question is look, let's say this is the axis of rotation how much is this perpendicular distance b by 2 how much is this perpendicular distance from this force b by 2 so what is the value i'll be writing here b by 2 and here it is also b by 2 so what is the net value force f into b by 2 plus f into b by 2 so my question how much is torque torque is equal to f how much ilb ilb into b by 2 plus ilb into b by 2 so you can add both of them so it will be torque is equal to i into b into l into b b by 2 plus b by 2 b so then so torque is equal to what is what is l into b area of the loop look at this what is length into breadth area of the loop so i can write so i into b into a so now this is not over here this is not over suppose n number of turns are there then the net torque is equal to n i a b okay n i a b provided if it is making if the loops area is making an angle theta if it makes an angle if area makes an angle theta angle theta then what what does it i mean what what you can do here so you can do so torque is equal to n i a b sine theta okay because torque is a cross product so torque is equal to n into so i a cross b this is what is the equation for this one or n i a b sin theta or n i a b so what about the torque maximum torque maximum is equal to n i a b that's it okay so i hope you understood very simple technique so this is the idea for the torque acting on a, i mean a current carrying loop when it is placed inside a magnetic field okay thank you